All right. Welcome, everybody, to a Monday expert interview. What a week we had last week, and it's only carrying over to this week. What does the future of construction look like? We are just coming off the industrialized wood-based construction conference where everyone was buzzing with the fact that while the current forecast may be a little disappointing, the future of construction is looking bright. And today we are extremely pleased to welcome back Hardy Wenzel, forest products industry expert, who you may remember from our CLT product spotlight on the Structure Labs expansion into North America. So, According to our guest today, building with wood will go higher, will go further, and will grow faster than any other building products in North America. Join us as we discuss the economic and environmental pressures in the built environment and why mass timber is set for a construction takeover in North America. However, we're not able to bring you any of these innovative conversations without our sponsors. So a quick shout out to Carson Holmquist and the team at Stream Logistics. They are experts in high stakes freight and they are the perfect choice for projects with timelines and a specific delivery sequence. Shipments with high complexity and unique constraints. The new methods of constructions need new transportation solutions and they are up for the challenge. Go and check them out at streamlogistics.com. Also, we can't move all this stuff around without our good friends from Combi Lift, the largest global manufacturer of multi-directional forklifts and straddle carriers. They are a leader in load, load handling solutions. Combi Lift helps companies of all sizes and from every industry maximize the capacity, safety, and efficiency of their warehouse and storage facilities. So a big thank you to Paul Short and the team at Combi Lift for helping us all to build it better. Check them out at www combilift.com. And we can't do any of this uh, without the automation side of it. So we got to give a big shout out to the folks at Brave Control Solutions, Brent McPhail and Cooper Lane. We are offsite manufacturing systems that do more than just improve productivity. They have a unique approach to industrialized construction, a lineup of flexible automation systems specifically designed for the construction industry and powered by CAD 2FAB, a turnkey solution for 3D volumetric assembly, structural and insulated panels, finished wall assemblies, MEP component processing, assembly, kitting, and storage. Go to thinkbrave.com to learn more. All right, without further ado, let's hop into it and bring in our guest of the day, Hardy Wenzel. Hardy, how are you, my friend? Hey, I'm good, Dave. Good to see you. I just yeah. saw you a couple of days ago in San Francisco. Here we are again. You know what? It's just it's just how the world works. There's so much exciting things going on. And there was such a buzz in San Francisco, uh, which was IWBC, the Industrialized Wood-Based Conference, for those of you just joining us. There was a huge buzz around offsite construction uh, in mass timber, wouldn't you say? Oh, it was it was uh, just excellent. And I just got to uh, uh, pile on your uh, your sponsor, Stream Logistics. Boy, if there's ever an industry that needs JIT and supersonic logistics services, it's uh, it's the mass timber world and uh, combi lift as well. I mean, uh, lots of combi lifts in my former company, so uh, those are great products. So I uh, just want to give another shout out to those folks as well. Well, you know what? I really, really do appreciate that. And I'm sure they appreciate it as well. You know, they, they've been in the industry a long time and Stream Logistics is doing just what you said. They are changing the way we do logistics. They're using all kinds of uh, technology to, to track and make it faster, better, and also stage the job sites. So thank you for that. All right. So, Artie, last time we had you on, Structure Lamb, you know, we talked about, you know, coming into North America and everything you were doing there. Why don't you why don't you give us your your two minute overview of what you're up to now, a little bit of your background for those that don't know you that are watching today's show. And then let's hop into the presentation that we have. And man, do we have a good presentation for you? Yeah, great. Thanks, Dave. So the uh, uh, Structural Lamb is uh, alive and well. It's my former company. Uh, since May, I have been uh, working primarily in the uh, consulting uh, space, uh, helping people think about wood products and advancing uh, mass timber solutions into, into uh, construction in North America. And I can tell you the, the uh, pipeline of business that uh, people are specifying and want to build with mass timber is just getting bigger and bigger all the time. The, uh, there's been several industry announcements made for more capacity. We saw SmartLAM announce 
uh, a large Gluam expansion in the U.S. South, uh, the uh, Conway plant in uh, Arkansas, that structural lamb built is up and running. There's uh, lots of projects in design that we know from our woodworks uh, uh, partners, uh, both east and west and in the U.S. So the industry is really, really just turning up a notch or two. And if I think back in the, into the space five years ago, I think we've added six new manufacturers in North America um, since uh, 2018, 2019. And, um, and I think there's got to be more, you know, we've, we've relied on yeah. offshore supply. I think that's going to be the case going forward until we start building more capacity here in North America as well. Yeah, you know what? It's coming on strong and fast, just off-site in general, mass timber being, you know, part of that. And I have to tell you, I mean, it's almost like the perfect storm is coming for the industry that we love so much to to, to really expand and grow uh, based on sustainability, reducing the carbon footprint, lack of labor. There's all of these things that are really just adding up to uh, add to the success of, of off-site construction and mass timber moving forward. So, yeah. all right. So with that said... We are going to fly through about 40 some slides. We're going to give a great education and we're going to talk about why mass timber is the future. You ready to hop into it? Yeah, let's go. Let's click. All right, here we go. I'm the clicker. All right. So, um, yeah, let's see. Come on. There it is. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So this is a beautiful building made out of mass timber. It was supplied by Structural Lamb some time ago. It's a community center. And uh, it's just a great backdrop to talk about the future of mass timber is now. So we can go forward. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, beautiful. Th there's Hardy, uh, recently CEO of Structural Lamb. I've, I've, uh, I've spent my entire career in the uh, wood products and engineered wood products space. And um, in the last, uh, I would say the last seven years of my four decades in the industry has been in mass timber. So uh, I'm really, really happy to be speaking to your, your, your following here today, Dave, so we can go on to the next one. And, you know, why will mass timber become mainstream in North American construction? Uh, you know, the first and foremost uh, piece of it is the climate crisis. And I know that we're heading into a recession. Uh, Dr. Dietz from uh, NAHB talked about that on one of your previous shows. He did. Uh, I listened to that uh, um, and, you know, everybody is saying that even the folks at uh, FEA are saying the same thing. So there's no doubt about that. However, we can't wait for uh, the recession to uh, start improving what we're doing in regards to the climate crisis here in North America and in the rest of the world. So we've got to act now. The construction industry must become more efficient. We all know that I've got some slides on that and there is absolutely no question that offsite construction is the future of our industry. Even Dr. Dietz mentioned that in his remarks the other day. So that was fantastic. Yeah. And uh, I think when we look at what the scale of what the North American mass timber industry can look like going forward, it's, you know, quite, you know, I've got a couple of slides on this as well, but we can see what's happened in Europe in the last 25 years. And I make a projection uh, on where I think we'll be in 25 years from when we started 10 years ago. So by, you know, the mass timber industry really took, took off with uh, Nordic structures in Quebec and structural lamb out of British Columbia. And now we have 14 manufacturers in North America, including several in the U.S. And, um, and uh, you know, we can almost uh, see a parallel thing happening in North America as to what we saw in Europe. Next slide, please. So North America headline here, and I, I, I apologize for the busy slide. There's 10 main points here. Why North America is poised for rapid growth in mass timber construction and supply will ultimately come from local plants, not imported products. But until we can build some plants, we're going to have to rely on our friends in Europe to bring product over to, to the U.S., it's becoming mainstream in North America. It should by 2035 be sitting alongside what we see today in concrete and steel. We've used it in North America now for over 10 years, as I just mentioned, and it's proven to be uh, able to engineer and solve complex building solutions. Um, mass timber can really bridge the gap. So a wood-based a wood product can really build uh, 
bridge the gap between light and heavy frame construction, so concrete and steel, and compete for a broad range of products. So it, it's not going to really go after the single family home construction where we see a lot of offsite construction happening. This will be in the multifamily commercial building space, institutional mm -hmm. space, et cetera. We're codified. I'll talk about that. So we can do up to 18 stories and these changes are being rapidly adopted in the mass timber space. Um, North America has a long history of building in wood and the supply channel is sophisticated from a design perspective to accelerate mass timber construction. Our, our lumber, our, our locally grown lumber resources are ideally suited for mass timber production. So it's standardized, it's traded as a commodity, it's widely available. There's nowhere in North America where lumber isn't available in any small town or big city, wherever you go, there is lumber. So we can make a lot of mass timber uh, mm -hmm. with that. We've got binational manufacturing standards for both CLT, GLT, so glued laminated timber and lumber. And this helps us scale up the industry to meet the demand. And uh, mass timber can help con transform the construction industry from a source of greenhouse gases into a carbon storage system because the carbon stays stored in the wood, which is then, which is then used in, and incorporated in the buildings. And if we use mass timber, we can cut up to 70% of the emissions and ensure the construction industry is a major part of the climate solution. So these are just the topics I'm going to talk about now. If we can move forward, Dave, please. Yep. So you've seen this slide. This is from uh, the McKinsey Global Institute. Um, our good friend, Jerry uh, McCaughey has showed this slide. Uh, Von Buckley has used this slide. I have used this slide, but it goes without saying that our industry needs uh, disruption. You can see that with our construction industry since the 70s has gone negative, not positive, like we've seen mm -hmm. all the other manufacturing, uh, agriculture, wholesale, retail, and the overall manufacturer, the overall uh, industry in general has been improving except construction. So if we move forward, please. You know, the, the uh, industry is the most inefficient industry in North America, mm -hmm. and it's also a major contributing, uh, contributing factor to climate crisis. Uh, McKinsey, The Economist, uh, have all said that we've been declining in efficiency for the past 50 years with no significant uh, productivity gains. The, the uh, steel, concrete produce 11% of greenhouse gases just on their own, let alone what the uh, operating uh, energy usage is in buildings. So we really have to make better buildings and we have to eliminate some of the concrete and steel that's being used. I'm not gonna sit, sit here and say we can remove all of it from, this, from the space because let's face it, concrete makes a very, very good foundation. It's a good layering product. Steel makes great hangers, makes rebar that you need in concrete, but we can certainly uh, minimize the use of it by bringing in mass timber. Uh, technology tools. Boy, did we ever talk about technology tools last week in San Francisco. We did. DFMA, uh, BIM, CAD, Revit, etc. It was just all these things are available to us. Uh, the construction industry needs to adopt these at a faster pace. And mass timber is basically a tech manufacturing business because you can't make mass timber without using all the digital tools that are available to you. And as I have already stated, mass timber sequesters carbon during the photosynthesis process of a tree. And that carbon remains locked up while the structures stand and when you replant and sustainably manage forests. So all of this can be improved. And I think mass timber can be a big disruptor in the space as we move along. I want to say, too, that I've spent my entire career in the construction industry in some capacity. So I desperately want to be a part of the solution. I think we have the, the means and methods to make it better. So I'm not here to tell you that I'm giving up on construction because we all have to do this together. Yeah. One more, please, Dave. So just some slides. We'll go through these very quickly. This is from Woodworks. <coughs> This shows in the, in the bottom right-hand corner, 25% schedule savings 
by using mass timber in commercial construction. This is a huge uh, benefit. We talked about this last week in the volumetric discussions and some of the offsite discussions as well. The same principles apply here to mass timber. So schedule savings of mass timber construction are very, very, very real and will help builders uh, move forward. Next, please. Again, this is from the uh, McKinsey and Company, where they're looking at where the value pools are going to shift. Uh, and it's, <laughs> if you read the headline on the top yeah. of the so slide here, 40 to 45% of the value in construction is expected to shift to offsite construction practices. So the blue bars are the important ones here. Uh, speed of construction, fewer deliveries mm -hmm. to site, less labor on site, reduced safety risk, cost reductions uh, related to other materials. You know, mass timber is one fifth the density of concrete. So when you think of, uh, you know, you're building an 18 story building, your dead loads coming down on your foundations, you can just imagine what kind of uh, cost savings you'll have in your foundation costs, your steel costs and all the other related elements to that. So it really points towards everything that uh, you do, Dave, in your world and everything we talked about last week at Greenbuild and at IWBC. Yeah, and I mean, this doesn't, uh, you know, we didn't even talk about the insurance savings, the workman's comp savings, or there's a whole lot more that even adds on top of what this, this report talks about. Yeah. All right, next, please. Again, this is just an example of schedule savings. This is the uh, famous Brock Commons building that was built in 2016. This was really the lightning rod of change for mass timber. Um, this also was the, uh, the uh, think tank for a lot of the code changes that we saw in 2021, going up to 18 stories. This is an 18 story building built on a concrete podium. So you can see in the image on the left, on June 8th of 2016, we had the concrete podium built. We had the concrete elevator shafts on the 23rd of June in 2016. So a couple of weeks later, we were starting to stand timber. On the 27th of July, uh, we were almost near the top. This building was fully erected uh, and up to lockup in uh, less than 60 days from when it started. So it was amazing. So this, I just show this to, to demonstrate what, uh, what's, what's happened from 2016 to 2022. A lot of things have improved in our uh, industry. This came in uh, compared to a concrete, full concrete structure, 3% uh, higher cost than a concrete structure. However, this was version 1.0 of a tall wood mass timber building. And I can yeah. tell you today by 2022, a lot of uh, that 3% premium has has evaporated. In fact, uh, there's a lot of buildings out there today that are coming in less cost than what concrete buildings are. Next, please. Right. So uh, with that said, planning for the future, the oldest building material known to man is also the future of construction. Wood just is featuring so, so positively into our future from a sustainability <laughs> standpoint, construction ability, off-site, et cetera. Next, please. So what is mass timber? It's basically a kit of parts. It's made up of uh, glue lamp timbers and CLT panels. And everything is built in a digital twin um, model, 3D model, uh, CNC machine. And it's, it's all built in a 3D model prior to fabrication. It leads to rapid installation, minimum site issues, better quality and lower costs. Next, please. You use it in floors, roofs, walls, cores, and shafts. So it really is a very, very versatile material. Why use mass timber? Well, it's beautiful, it's durable, it's strong, it's adaptable, it can solve complex engineering problems, and most importantly, it's sustainable. We've also proven that mass timber, uh, there's several, several job site assembly benefits. I've talked about these already, the speed of the build, the reduced material cost, less, less labor, less weight. It's dry, there's less waste disposable, there's less construction site noise, and it's safer. Now, 
where is North America going with mass timber? So this is a, from a book called Crossing the Chasm by Jeffrey Moore. He wrote this in the early 1990s. So it's an old book. It was all written about technology in Silicon Valley. And I'm here to tell you that I believe we have crossed the chasm. The chasm is the uh, call, referred to in the book where products either make it or they don't make it. So if you fall into the chasm of death, you're never coming out. And here, uh, I'd like to say that North America has jumped over that chasm uh, for the fact, uh, I'll, I'll mention here in a moment, but the fact that we're in the building codes and that they've been codified so quickly, uh, North America will soon be entering that phase of early majority. And I think we're already there as a result of proving its value beyond all these lightning rod or exemplar pro uh, projects that I've talked about. So this is a very similar project, a product life cycle curve as you would see on any product, any kind of service. And we're very much into that early adopter uh, phase moving into the early majority. And you can already see it today with what some of the large blue chip companies are doing in wanting to use mass timber to reduce their carbon footprints, to get carbon uh, credits. Uh, and, and there are several hundred market-based developments that have used uh, mass timber um, over the last several years that are already proving that the uh, economics of mass timber works. So the next slide, Dave, shows us where we are, so to speak, uh, in in uh, North America. And um, you can see we are just right there in the middle of the page, that blue dot where it says North America. And then you can see, thank you, Dave, and you can see where we are moving, where some of the other countries are moving up, mm -hmm. where the UK is, um, other continental Europe, European countries in the Baltics and in Scandinavia. And then, of course, where Germany, Austria, Switzerland, uh, Switzerland and Italy is located and you can see once they're they're all moving up the same life cycle curve that I mentioned on the previous side slide and the key point here is that we're we're in the building codes in North America and that that just really really de-risks a lot of thinking for people on the uh, usage of mass timber next please so will North American mass timber uh, develop faster than in Europe. Um, I would say if we go to the next slide here, and we'll just flick through these uh, quite quickly, Dave, but uh, I say it will. Uh, a lot of our European colleagues are saying that it will. Um, we're, we've got a strong building with wood culture. We've got building codes are changing at a faster rate than in Europe. And if you think about the building codes in North America, you basically have two. You have a U.S. code, the International Building Code, and you have sure. a Canadian code. In Europe, you've got uh, 27 member nations in the European Union, and they're all different codes, and they're different languages. They haven't been harmonized yet. So this is really an accelerant for us. Next slide, please. This is kind of a dry slide, and I apologize, but this is very, very important that we have North American manufacturing standards. So when you think of a product adoption, you have to think of codes and standards. And here we have uh, a binational standard for structural glued laminated timber. And we also have a, a binational standard for making CLT. And this just levels the field for yeah. everyone. It shows you how, it tells you how you must do it. Uh, these standards are, are um, audited monthly by um, third party agencies. So, this really also helps us move the industry forward. Next, please. Lots of training going on uh, by, for architects and engineers. I mentioned Woodworks before. I'm going to give a shout out to Bill Parsons and Jennifer Cover at Woodworks for the good work that they're doing. You know, if you go to the next slide here, uh, please, the, the, um, the Woodworks there you can see is being getting funding from various uh, the Softwood Lumber Board, which is a binational board, they're getting uh, funding from forest, Forestry Innovation Investment from the province of British Columbia, the American Wood Council, and all these agencies are doing fantastic work on the codes and standards side, as well as outreach work, as I mentioned that what Woodworks is mm -hmm. doing to help architects and engineers better understand how to design and build with mass timber. 
As I mentioned, there are several hundred high profile uh, market-based developments already in place that are, are using Mass Timber. They're coming back to use it for a second time, third time. So I know the economic model works. Next, please. And now this is the uh, where we're going. This is uh, in the bottom right hand corner. You can see here that the uh, source of this study is from the Softwood Lumber Board. And back in 2020, and you can see there, they, uh, there there's uh, under the graph there in uh, October of 2020, so two years ago, they have uh, predicted with some real science, basically figuring out the usage rate of mass timber in existing buildings <clears throat> and applying it across multifamily, commercial, uh, tall wood, uh, institutional buildings. And they've, they've come up with a 2035 demand, a high side, a base case, and a low case. Now, if this is true, so 2035 would mean that after 25 years of mass timber usage in North America, because as I mentioned before, Nordic and Structural M kicked this whole party off back in 2010, 2011 timeframe. So if you take it from there, out to 2035, there's your 25 years. If this base case scenario comes true, that will require anywhere from 60 to 100 mass timber manufacturing plants in North America. That wow. is amazing. Today we have about 14. So there's a lot of investment that has to come to build out this case. Now, another way to look at it, uh, after 25 years of market adoption in the EU, there are 69 CLT plants uh, with about 2 million cubic meters of consumption, actual production, and there's over 100 glue lamp timber plants in operation with over 3 million cubic meters of capacity. So the low case on this, this particular demand study is 6.5 million cubic meters of, of mass timber. And you can see in, in Europe, you've got about 5 million after 25 years. So I don't know where the number is going to land, Dave, but it's going to be somewhere between what's happened in Europe and what the, what the forecasts say. Well, and that's it. And we've been we've been chasing, you know, chasing Europe lately uh, and, and playing a little bit of catch up. They are further advanced with a lot of these things than we are. Um, and if, if history is going to repeat itself as it has been, uh, we'll probably do exactly what you said, even yeah. in offsite in general. We need thousands of manufacturing facilities to do offsite, you know, mass timber, CLT. You know, that that's that's a piece of the entire puzzle. So imagine what's going to happen if you're if, if we're going to have 60, 100 new plants on just in just in the mass timber CLT space. And then you start adding volumetric and panel with it and everything else. That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, that we're, we're already starting to see some distinct differences uh, between how we use mass timber in North America versus yeah. uh, Europe. Uh, in Europe, there's a lot of wall construction using mass timber. But boy, Dave, to your point, this offsite construction in the panelized world, uh, making prefabricated wall panels to work with uh, mass timber floors and glue lamp beams and columns, there's really more of a hybrid scenario happening here just because of our building with wood culture and how we've That's already right. done things in the past. So, yeah, so we can move on from this one. Um, the, the real key ingredient to... Uh, to mass timber is using lumber. So lumber, we are a lumber rich geography. So this is a, a slide from the Forest Economic Advisors. Uh, this shows you where all the sawmills are up in the Pacific Northwest, including Canada, up in the Northeast and down in the US South. So you can see that cluster of sawmills down in the US South is just very profound as well as you have up there in the Pacific Northwest and British Columbia and Alberta. But there are, uh, there is a huge amount of lumber production on in that pie chart, you can see where the uh, usage goes. And I can't wait, Dave, to see a sliver in that pie that says mass timber at about 4.9 billion board feet that we saw on yeah. the other slide. 
Now, it's going to be part of multifamily. It's going to be part of non-residential. We're probably going to see that green pie or that slice of the pie get bigger as we penetrate more into the non-residential segment. Mm -hmm. But um, you can really see where we're going with all of this. And the, the, the key part that I want you to take away from this is that we have up in the orange banner up top, 72 billion board feet BBF of lumber capacity. And in 2021, 2022, we're using 64 to 63 billion board feet. So we got lots of capacity. Yeah, I would and, say so. Um, I also want you to know that in North America, there's about a billion acres of forests <clears throat> in North America. And 530 million of those acres are certified by SFI and FSC, which means in general that our forests are sustainably managed. And I can tell you for a fact that growth exceeds harvest. So okay. I don't want anybody to ever think that we're part of what's happening in some of the developing world countries where rainforests are being extracted at an alarming rate. We yeah. actually do a very, very good job in North America and how we manage our forests. We have, cons we have a lot of lumber production and this lumber is all standardized. And so we have a lot of available wood fiber to make mass timber going forward and to make wall studs for offsite construction practices Etc. Yeah, that, that's a great that's a great point, right? Because I wouldn't even have thought that. So we're we're growing timber faster than we're taking it down, is what you just said, right? That is a fact. Well, that's pretty cool. Yep, that is great. Now, I will also tell you that sawmilling is a very ma complex manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. So you can see this is a picture of a log deck at a sawmill anywhere in North America, and you can see not every log is the same size. <laughs> Not every log is the same species. So you can see redwoods and whitewoods in there. And it just is a function of where they live and where their sawmills are. And if you go to the next slide, Dave, please. Not all lumber is suitable for mass timber manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So in a given log, you get many different grades. You get many different sizes. You get different qualities. So it's really incumbent upon the sawmiller to make sure that he makes the right stuff for the mass timber manufacturer. And this has been debugged in North America and, and um, works very, very, very well. Weren't, weren't well. you the one telling me that they have uh, CAT scans for lumber now? Yeah, yeah. So there, there's, there's lots of optical digital scanning uh, uh, equipment that tells the, the sawyer in the sawmill how to cut that log that you see on the right side. Yeah. It will also profile the log to tell you exactly what you're going to cut out of that log. And then when that lumber comes to the mass timber manufacturer, there are optical scanners that we use to basically do an MRI or a CAT scan on a piece of wood to find out where the defects are, how strong it is, what the moisture content is, right. and where we can effectively use it in the making of mass timber. Yeah, and I think the greatest visual here for a lot of people that are watching this to take away that aren't familiar with the industry on this side is there's a lot of tech behind using every piece of that lumber that can possibly be used and not wasted. And I think that's super, super important for people to understand. I mean, that picture is a very good description of that. Yeah, and, and just uh, to play on that a little bit. So there are always residual products made when you make lumber, when you make OSB, yeah. if you make mass timber. But those residual products are all utilized. They go into, in some cases, to make energy for the manufacturing plant. Uh, a lot of times the shavings and sawdust uh, is sold to a pellet manufacturer for biomass yeah. fuels. Uh, it goes to paper production, and it can also go for agricultural products, uh, for livestock bedding, or for landscaping, etc. So there is no waste. Everything gets used downstream. Here just shows you a couple of slides. Softwood lumber pricing, it is a true commodity. So that the, the, the one on the top left there are lumber prices, a 20-year snapshot. So starting in 2002, there's a light blue line and a dark blue line. Uh, the dark blue is Western SPF lumber coming from the interior of British Columbia. 
And the other color, the light blue line is southern yellow pine west of the Mississippi, down in the uh, Arkansas wood basket, uh, East Texas, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, et cetera, et cetera. And you can see how closely lumber trades together as a commodity until we had the, the pandemic induced market imbalances in 2020 and 2021. And Dr. Dietz even talked about this, how this affected home affordability because we saw a 4X increase in lumber pricing through the pandemic. The chart on the bottom shows you a couple of, it's kind of a busy slide, but the one you want to look at is the dark black line, the 2022 line, how prices have come down in 2022. And that dark dashed line at the bottom of that chart is actually the 10 year average of lumber prices. So look where lumber is today. It's back right where it was at the 10 year average. And I get this slide from uh, Paul Quinn at RBC Capital, and he puts this out weekly. And I just love looking at this because it just tells the story where lumber is, how it's traded as a commodity, and uh, how universally uh, it can be used, given the fact that it is, uh, you know, it, our lumber standards are, are all uniform. So a two by four in Southern Pine, a two by four in SPF all work together and are there at the disposal of a, of a mass timber manufacturer. Next slide, please. Uh, this is just a slide to show you where there have been investments made. This is just in the U.S. South. This is the lumber industry already declaring that they are making investments to produce 4.5 billion board feet more of lumber. So I've said before, right now we have 72 billion board feet of lumber capacity. This slide will tell you that they're adding about 4.5 billion. And it just happens to be the amount that we think we're gonna consume in mass timber by 2035. So I don't want anybody on the show here to think that we don't have enough wood out there or that we don't grow and harvest wood sustainably. So this just is to show you that. Now, mass timber is the link between con construction and the tech industries. So next slide, please. The dirty digital mile. <laughs> this is really what we used to do on a job site. We would ship a whole bunch of stuff out to a job site and then try to figure out where it goes and how to use it and do we have enough and it's lying in the mud, etc. All this is done in a digital twin model long before anything ever gets to a job site. So this is just an opener here, Dave. We can move on, please. BIM modeling, you know, it's the, uh, I got this from our good friend, uh, Franco Piva. Uh, he, he posted this some time ago and I loved it. And so I'm using this. Thank you, Franco from Ergo Domus, uh, who was also at the uh, IWBC and gave a great presentation. But this is the tip of the wooden iceberg. And you can see how much information sits below the surface for what is actually used by various different material manufacturers suppliers, lab labor subcontractors, and general contractors. And usually the BIM model, once a project goes live, is usually controlled by someone in the general contractor side of the, uh, uh, of the industry. Next, please. So technology-driven manufacturing business. Um, Glulam, CLT are manufactured offsite in factories. We make it by bonding together multiple layers of wood with durable moisture and heat resistant adhesives. These billets are then fabricated on CNC machines. And you can't fabricate them until you've actually got a digital twin and a model that is approved by everybody from the architect, the engineer, the contractor, etc. Because once you push the go button, those CNC robots start processing wood very quickly and you want to end up with a Lego-like building material as you're moving forward. Uh, CLT and Glulam are ideally suited for uh, BIM, uh, for DFMA, and for tim timber engineering software tools that every mass timber manufacturer uses, uh, and many of those folks were at the IWBC as well. Next, please. So, all of this, DFMA, designed for manufacture and assembly, all of this is built in a model. Every detail, every nut, bolt, and screw 
collision, clash, MEP openings, all that stuff has to be figured out before you move forward. Next, please, Dave. And this is what this, that, that, that model begins to look like. You've got to look right inside the wood to see how those pins, how those connectors are all going to interface with the CLT and the glue lamp timbers. Next. And this is where the magic happens, the CNC machinery. The uh, Hundegger is a company uh, that is widely used in offsite construction, in mass timber construction. They have a wide range of uh, robots that uh, are, are built for purpose. And you can see that uh, uh, once the code goes in the CAD model, it then there is a transition in, in some of these timber engineering software products like CAD work or SEMA or Dietrich, yep. they then get trans transferred over into the CAM, the computer aided manufacturing process where you can just do all kinds of stuff that is um, just very, very interesting to, to observe. But a mass timber manufacturer has to be big into CNC. And the, the, uh, the point here is that the, the 3D model is what informs a lot of this. So we're moving along into industry 4.0. A lot of uh, discussion on that is happening. I would say that mass timber is somewhere in industry 3.0, 3.1, 3.2. You can see where I've kind of put it on the chart there, um, uh, but there still is room for improvement. And I think we're just, that's just gonna be the evolution of offsite construction, regardless if it's mass timber or any of the other uh, methods that are used. Okay. Yep. So in-house uh, a project deployment, no different than what uh, we would see in any of the other offsite uh, methodologies. You need an in-house team based uh, design collaboration. You need integrated 3D BIM teams. And all of this leads to simplified installation of a kit of parts just in time and schedule savings on your construction. And this is near the end of the talk here, Dave, but uh, I always like to end on this one, put another log on the fire. It really, you know, shows everybody how uh, mass timber works. Uh, wood does burn, but it chars first. Char rate is a fire engineering ca calculation that engineers can use to, to design mass timber structures. Uh, the, the adhesives are also designed to resist delamination caused by fire and heat. And when done correctly, um, wood is a suitable building material that performs very predictably in a fire event. It's no different than designing in, in concrete and steel. You can have a char, uh, a char rate uh, fire engineering calculation, or you can use what's called an encapsulation method which is what the tall wood provisions are in the building code today is where you would put plasterboard or sheetrock around the exposed wood just to uh, protect life safety in a fire event. Wow. Uh, you know, <clears throat> Hardy, I have to say, you know, I'm glad you ended with that because that's always, I think the general public's concern is, oh, it's wood. You know, they hear mm -hmm. about the, all the fires back in years and years ago, but that, that picture, and I've seen others like that, that really showcase that, you know, um, it doesn't burn through like people would think it chars first and it takes a long time to burn through. And I always equate it to people go and start a fire outside with one big round log. Let me know how that works out for you. Cause it isn't happening real quick or, or easily. So, so um, I like to use that as, a, as, as an example. All right. So we are at uh, 150 here. We're rocking and rolling. We got, we got, we got some comments we want to get to. You want to get to some comments? You bet. All right. A couple of hellos real quick. Hey, what's happening, Greg? Says hello, Dave. And then we have a couple of Clark here. Clark Kit also asked a few questions. Let me just go to the top. Well, let me do this here. Jerry Makahi. Good morning, everyone. Hardy is a true expert uh -huh. and driver in the mass timber space. Always good to see you, Jerry. Thank you for tuning in. He was at IWBC. Happens to be the place to be. If you didn't go, you should definitely sign up for next year. It's in Washington, D.C. next year. So hopefully that's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, there you go. Art Schmoen. How you doing, my friend? Hey, Dave and Hardy tuning in from Luca, Italy. Well, I hope you made it back safe and sound uh, from IWBC. Great to see you as well. Buzz Holitzer, no crane, no gain. Now, who said that? 
I have no idea. I did. Maybe Buzz did. No crane, no gain. All right, Clark says, tuning in from Chicago, question for later on. Can you point to specific uh, resources with cost comparisons versus steel and concrete construction? Uh, and then there's a follow-up. Also, how do you estimate potential market size of mass timber in the U.S.? Okay, well, the uh, budget uh, cost comparisons, I think uh, one of the key people you could talk to is you could reach out to a... Um, one of the manufacturers so in your part of the world you've got uh, 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 Nordic um, Jean-Luc Dubois lives in upstate New York you've got Element 5 Patrick Schwinnard in St. Thomas Ontario you've got Smart Land folks you've got Structure Land folks you yeah. could also uh, you know if you want a more impartial point of view you could talk to the Woodworks people and yeah. you can just go right to Woodworks. They're online. They, you could uh, find the uh, closest person to you there. I know they have representation there. And you could uh, get uh, that kind of information right directly from them. Yeah, and an element a lot of it. Yeah, in Element 5, Patrick Chenard, I just did a panel with him at IWBC. I mean, what an amazing presentation that that guy had. It was uh, it was really wonderful to sit up there and do that with him. Um, and then how, how, how do you estimate the potential size of mass timber in the U.S.? Yeah, so that uh, study I showed you was done uh, impartially by, uh, so by third party, it had nothing to do with yep. me. That was by the Softwood Lumber uh, Board. Okay. Um, and basically what they did is they looked at uh, a variety of where the uh, uh, mass timber applications are best suited. So in multifamily, mid-rise, uh, tall wood, uh, institutional buildings, office buildings, you know, basically out of the reach of uh, what stick frame can do. Mm -hmm. And then they worked with um, uh, Dodge Analytics to get a hold of uh, how much square footage of construction uh, has occurred in these uh, various tar target uh, building typologies. And they looked at actual mass timber usage rates and did the math and then looked at a penetration rate assumption over 25 years. And they came up with these market estimates. Some people will tell you that they're aggressive. Um, there are about three, um, uh, what I would call very, very good assessments that have been done and uh, basically what I would do uh, is um, look at all three and take an average to kind of see where that uh, number comes in at. I yeah. do know that uh, Arch Moan and FEA and Francois Robichaud are working on another um, estimate of um, mass timber potential in North America. So that one will also be very refined and uh, one that I look forward to looking at going forward. But, you know, if you really want to look uh, what's happened 25 years, look at, uh, you know, the 69 manufacturers of CLT and right. in, in the EU and the 100 plus glue lamb makers in, in the EU. And, and, you know, there's there is a very reliable number. Yeah, there definitely is. So uh, FEA, just so everybody knows, Forest Economic Advisors. So if you're going to search that up and you wanted to see some of their reports, uh, that's what you need to search up. So we're going to speed round through a couple of these. We're at about 55 minutes in. We got Henry Mickelberg. Eurocode 5 has around 85% harmonization across member states. But I get your point is what he says. Yep. Good to see you. Hey, we got Cooper Lane from Brave Control Solutions, a sponsor of our show. It's always awesome when they tune in. He says, uh, believe it or not, Brave has some really innovative solutions delivered to mass timber producers. If it's offsite, we do it. Absolutely. And they were also out at uh, out at IWBC. And uh, we always appreciate everybody that allows us to bring these innovative conversations. And Brave is not short on that, that, that line of string right there at all. So we appreciate you. Good to see you, Cooper Lane. Check them out. Brave uh, is, is leading the way. They really are. All right. What else we got? Raymond Peters says, there is not enough skilled labor to build normal houses. Timber frame houses require master carpenters to build good luck. I guess there's some banter and stuff going on in the uh, in the back said. And Clark Kitt says, what is the approximate cost to build a CLT, CLT mill? This is a good question. Yeah, so um, the newest factory is in Conway, Arkansas. Uh, that's a structural plant. And the CapEx budget for that plant is uh, 
as with public information was uh, 90 million dollars US. 90 million. Uh, that is a state of the art large scale gluam and CLT production facility. Yeah, nothing. We can do that. I mean, with when you look at the investment of what's getting ready to happen in this country with with offsite construction, mass timber, you know, and and the other the other parts of offsite, you know, modular panelization and all that, um, it's not going to surprise me. I, I don't think that's a lot of money. I think we're going to see a ton of money really flowing into this space to build out these manufacturing. In fact, to me, it's almost like it's a race to the finish line at this point um, on on who's really going to come to this country, whether you live here or you're coming in from overseas to, to really take some market share. It, it's not when it's, it, it's not if it's when, right? Yep. Love it. All right. Good, good, good. Let's keep moving down here. Uh, but, but, uh, Hey, Gregory says, hello. Good to see you. I think I put that up earlier. Peter Molinar, Shao Sugi ban is a marvelous technique. I'm not sure I understand that one. And I think the, uh, the, uh, the no crane, no gain was Jerry Makahi. How did I not know that Jerry? Jeez. No crane, no gain. I agree. All right. What haven't we covered, Hardy? What haven't? Is there anything that we did not put out there that you wish people know? Oh, boy. I think we covered a lot of ground. I think uh, the future is now. Um, <laughs> as I said, the uh, climate crisis is not going to wait. We must act now. And uh, off-site construction is the future. And um, I, think, I think we're good for today, Dave. I love it. I got one more. There's one more comment in there. I think we should answer it. It's a, it's kind of a pushback. Let's see what it says. It says CLT can't be used for manufacturing net zero buildings. Any building that is not net zero will produce so much CO2. Hence, it will be banned by 2030. It's a big conversation. What's your thoughts on that? Geez, I'm not sure I agree, but um, I, I'd want to unpack that one a little bit further. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, you know what? Net Zero Modular, why don't you reach out to Hardy? I think it's a good conversation to have, right? Yeah. Um, I, I don't, I, I see the net, third, net Zero 30 coming. Some people are pushing it out to net, you know, net zero by 50. Um, but it's definitely, it's definitely moving that way. And I will tell you that I think Mass Timber is definitely part of the ongoing uh, movement to reduce that carbon footprint, no matter how we look at it. Because you're not doing away with steel. You're not doing away with concrete anytime soon. It's just not happening. That's my opinion, if I can have one. All right, perfect. All right, Hardy, listen, how do, uh, how do people, what's the best way for people to get a hold of you? Well, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, Hardy Wenzel, I'm there. My uh, email, um... <laughs> there it is. Literally burnt cedar board. Sorry, I didn't mean uh, to interrupt you there, but I wanted yeah, to clarify yeah. what he meant. Yeah, so LinkedIn is a good place to get a hold of me and then we can just pick it up from there. Awesome. Well, listen, Hardy, it's always a pleasure having you on the show. I agree with you. I think this is going to be a, a big part of our future moving forward. Uh, clearly, it, you know, a lot of people in the audience feel the same way uh, as well. So moving forward, I want everybody to know I will be in Denver. I'm going to catch a flight right now. We are going out to the uh, ECI Connect Trailblazers Conference happening November 9th through the 11th. So I will be in Denver, Colorado. So if you're in Denver and, and you want to you possibly meet up, Come check us out. I think we're at the, the Gaylord's uh, Hotel. I think it's the Gaylord Rockies uh, Hotel. I don't know. It's pretty beautiful, Artie. You should come You should come and check it out. <laughs> um, but we will be there starting tonight through Friday. So there you have it, everybody. Hardy, thanks so much for joining us today. You bet. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, I appreciate you. All right, everybody. We'll see you on uh, – in fact, we'll see you tomorrow, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and possibly Thursday. You're going to see a lot of Dave Cooper live this week, so I'll apologize in advance. But guess what? You might learn something, so tune in. We'll see you next time. Stay there, Hardy. I'll come back to you after the outro. Bye, everybody. Mm -hmm.